Hello friends, hope all of you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to discuss a very interesting, easy, but at the same time quite tricky topic that is bilingualism from MEG4 aspects of language. So today's session is going to be on the consequences of bilingualism for the languages and for the individual. The same question has been asked in December term and examination 2019 for 20 marks. So I'll be giving you some important pointers for you to elaborate. So do watch the video till the end. And if you happen to like the video, do consider to hit the like button so that we can reach a wider audience. So without any further ado, let's start with the video. So before understanding the consequences of bilingualism for the languages and for the individual, let us understand what is bilingualism as a whole. So bilingualism is commonly defined as the use of at least two languages by the individual. That means a person should have a mastery of at least two languages to be known as bilingual. That means two, okay, two language. Similarly, if a person is having mastery in only one language, he will be known as monolingual, okay, or a monolinguist. Fine, mono means one. So it is a fluctuating system in children and adults whereby use of and proficiency in two languages may change depending on the opportunities to use the languages and exposure to other users of the languages. Now bilingualism further is divided into two types. The first one is simultaneous bilingualism and the second one is sequential bilingualism. Let us understand one by one. Simultaneous bilingualism occurs when a young child has had significant and meaningful exposure to two languages from birth. Ideally, the child will have equal quality experiences with both languages. Now, as the term suggests, simultaneous, that means a person, particularly a child in our case, is being exposed to two languages at the same time. Now, this happens in case of parents who are of different native tongues. Okay, so this child who are having parents of different languages, of different native cultures and languages do get the exposure of simultaneous bilingualism. Let's see the second category that is the sequential bilingualism. Sequential bilingualism occurs when an individual has had significant and meaningful exposure to a second language usually after the age of three and after the first language is well established. Now after discussing about the definition and types of bilingualism, let us now come to the main concept and main theme of today's session that are the consequences of bilingualism for the languages and for the individual. Alright, first of all we have to understand that based on a research, bilingualism alters the structure and function of the mind. Alright, these effects of bilingualism that have been documented for language processing and for cognition more generally suggest a significant degree of adult plasticity that we would not otherwise see if research were restricted to speakers of a single language. In simple words, bilingualism gives a particular edge to an adult or in most cases the results of bilingualism is noticed in later age. But as of now, you have to understand that bilingualism alters the, stru alters the structure and function of the mind. All right. And what happens is that it influences the language processing and cognition ability. Now, cognition means what? Your ability to acquire knowledge. All right. So it gives a positive impact on overall mental growth as compared to a monolinguist. Now let us talk specifically what are the consequences of bilingualism for the individual. Now a particular research shows that bilingualism has a somewhat muted effect in adulthood but a larger role in older age. All right. Now this means that in our adulthood the results or the consequences of bilingualism is somewhat not visible. All right. But it is observed more clearly in older age because it protects against cognitive decline. Now, as we know that as we grow older, our ability to attain or gain new knowledge or knowledge declines. All right. So bilingualism, according to a particular report, it protects against cognitive decline, a concept known as cognitive reserve. Now, this research claims that a person who is bilingual will have the ability to retain or gain more knowledge even in his older age compared to a person who is exposed to a single language okay one language that is monolingualism okay 
Now, this recent evidence that bilingualism is associated with a delay in the onset of symptoms of dementia. That means dementia is nothing but mental disorders or mental illness that often happens in older age. Now, bilingualism, according to this research, helps in delaying the symptoms of dementia. Now, let us see the consequences of bilingualism for language and cognitive development. Bilinguals may be able to inhibit irrelevant verbal and non-verbal information with greater ease than monolinguals. Alright, so this means that bilinguals have an edge over the monolinguals based on a research. Alright, inhibitory control ability is slower to decline with age in bilinguals than in monolinguals. The average age of dementia, as I've already mentioned, onset is larger in bilinguals than in monolinguals. Now let me be let me give you an idea why it happens. Because you see, when we use two languages simultaneously, then what happens is that we are using our brain, we are using the capacity of our brain comparatively more than a monolingual. So that type of exercise actually helps our brain to grow more compared to the monolinguals. So that is a small you know, explanation to explain why the bilinguals have an edge over monolinguals. Now, let me also quickly mention about a disadvantage of bilingualism. Now, some of the disadvantages of bilingualism are an apparent delay in language acquisition. Or in simple words, when a particular child is exposed to too many languages, he or she might take time in acquiring a particular language, okay? to have a mastery on a particular language or in the two language at the same time. So that delaying happens when a particular child is exposed. Why? Because that child is confused between the interference between the two phonological, lexical and grammatical systems and a possible decrease in vocabulary in both languages. So this is the video guys. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, I have been very discreet in mentioning the different pointers related to bilingualism and its consequences for the languages and for the individual but obviously it will not be enough to construct an answer for 20 marks i would highly recommend that you also mention the consequences of bilingualism for l1 and l2 that is first language and second language and you incorporate those points in your answer so that your answer becomes more constructive and more presentable in case if you have any other doubts regarding bilingualism do feel free to comment in the comment section i will meet you soon with a new video and a new topic on MEG4 aspects of language and also don't forget to like the video so that we can reach a wider audience and don't forget to join our social community through the links given in the description that is our Facebook page and Facebook group. Till I meet you next time, God bless you and thank you all.